I have a question for you. Um, have you ever faced uh, the situation uh, you you enter a room and uh, suddenly there is silence? Nobody talks anymore. So it can be because uh, you're the new guy, uh, because uh, you're a complete stranger, or you're perhaps the boss and the guys there, they are just trying to find out a way to get completely wasted on company expenses. There's different, there's different ways uh, why people stop uh, talking. With, uh, stop talking. Um, in business, uh, this is kind of tricky uh, if people just don't talk with you anymore, because uh, usually if you go there to a customer, uh, you want to sell something, you want to implement something, you want to do anything with, uh, with them, but unfortunately, the only thing you get back is silence. So, nothing there. It's uh, like, uh, um, no, our IT guys are not here. It's like uh, my, my company computer, my, my laptop, it's uh, completely locked down, uh, so uh, I could do quite a lot of sec uh, cool security things with my computer, but as it's locked down, I cannot do anything. So it's like in business, so you, are, you would have this power, you would have everything, but unfortunately, they don't let you. So um, my presentation is um, a little bit different than uh, it's usually here. Uh, most probably that's why not so many people are here. <laughs> and Johan was a kind of scared that nobody shows up. Um, it's not technical. So that means uh, if you're a hardcore programmer here, then I'm really, really sorry. There is not a single line of code in this whole presentation, really. And I will not tell you how hardcore hacking of uh, your of uh, your mother's bank account will look like or whatever. So this is not the case. It's uh, it's more or less uh, like um, a little talking about uh, how my daily work looks like, uh, what I experienced in the past, uh, and why people are as they are, perhaps some, something in, in, that, in, that in that direction. So, um, this is uh, my introduction, actually, I had one on already. So you can see, uh, hello, my name is uh, Confidential. Uh, I'm coming from uh, Classified Information, and I do work for, this is completely top secret. That's how it looks like, you know, I told you before, that's my daily work. So you, you're going there and it's like nothing. Okay, uh, we, we had this information already before, so now you can see. Huh? See? Yeah. Even th oh, one earring is missing, but uh, that was uh, because I was at the dentist, so I had to put, uh, put it out. <laughs> but it's different. Um, so my name is uh, Thomas Dlohe Lasse. Dlohe, yeah. Uh, so you don't have to remember that one. Um, I'm coming from uh, Austria, um, so that's why I don't speak Swedish. Actually, I don't speak Swedish at all. Um, coming from uh, from Innsbruck, uh, so I'm this mountain guy, you know, these small, tricky guys. Uh, I'm living now in Vienna, a little bit more fancy. Um, but but why, do you, why do I tell you where I come from? This is completely not interesting. What does this have to do with security? The thing is, actually, this one is uh, already a good point, because I'm coming from this mountain area. People don't talk with strangers there, except it's tourists, uh, and we rob the money from them. But I'm really used to this. Being there, people don't talk with me. So. I know how to, how to handle this. In Vienna, it's diff different because everybody's talking with you. Um, one important thing, because I was just recently in Spain, I just had to bring this up. I'm really sorry for that one. There is no kangaroos in Austria. Really, believe me. I was just in Spain, and uh, this guy said, like, hey, you had a long trip uh, to Barcelona. So, yeah, it's two hours. Uh, so, Haha, you're joking. Yeah, no, this is a really long flight. 12 hours so. So, no, Austria. We have Mozart and those things. So, it didn't work. So, uh, <laughs> Sweden, Switzerland. Yeah, we have, we have chocolate there. You can come. We have chocolate. We, have this, we sell this in vans. No, sorry. Um, I'm working for... Advenica, as Lasse already said, uh, so this is just more or less around the corner. I, I have no idea this direction, I guess. Roskilwegen something? 
really cool company. Um, and I'm working as a solutions engineer, not sales engineer, because I'm really, I really suck at sales. I don't, I don't talk. Um, solutions engineer, so um, as this shirt already says, so I'm the one, the, the striking force out at the customer, doing everything to make them kind of happy, uh, implementing things, making things work, erasing problems. I'm the hero, more or less. Okay, that's too much. Um, Background, so I'm very long in IT, so I've, I will not make it to a different thing because I'm too stupid for that one, so I'm good for it, IT. I worked in different, uh, in different companies, so uh, technical planning office, I even worked for the government, it was really boring. Um, ERP software company was also boring. Um, Real-time animation software company, this was cool, television, graphics, very cool, and uh, obviously I worked uh, for different uh, IT security companies. So why do I tell you this one, my background, where I worked? The thing is, you can see here, I always had to handle people. I always had to talk with, with people. Um, and um, once a, a colleague of mine said like, so, hey, you, you're doing kind of a good job, so uh, what, what's your secret? And I said, like, oh, it's pretty simple, actually. Um, I don't like people. I really, I really, it's, it's sorry for you guys, but I don't like people, really, uh, not at all. Um, the thing is, uh, why does this help me? Because the thing is, I try to get rid of them as fast as possible, so I try to get all the information from them I need and give them what they want, and then, then I'm off. That's the secret. The problem is, as I said in the beginning, getting this information. This is the major, this is the major problem. So, as it says here, why is the lack of information transfer? So, why does it happen that information does not come into my direction and I can use this information to do what, I'm, uh, what, I, what I need to? So, is security, that's why we are here, is security a showstopper? Um, I, I want to give you a little, a little, um, a little story of a, of a customer which, uh, uh, which actually happened to, to me, not only to me, so we were four guys from, from, uh, from Advenica, and uh, we were going to a customer for a PUC. Usually, okay, proof of concept, you're going there, you're explaining things, they're trying it out, then they do some mistakes, you help them, then they're happy, then they buy. Yeah in the normal world. Um, there we were four guys sitting there. We had all these security clearances. Uh, we had to give off uh, our mobile phone, keys, uh, gun, knife, everything. Everything was taken from us so we could still wear our underwear, but this was already a very tricky situation. So we were sitting in this room, four guys of us. I can't remember, it was five or six from them on the other side. A wall of monitors facing them and we were sitting on this side. And then usually there is this introduction round, so like say, hey, hello, my name is Thomas, I'm working for Advenica, I'm a solution, blah, 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 blah. We all know this one. It's very boring, everybody's like, what? Now, next time, I am next, I'm next, what should I tell, what should I tell? Damn it, he said my sentence. Um, so, um, yeah, this was, so we were doing one, two, three, four, Advenica, and then the customer, we've never met them before, they were sitting there and they were introducing themselves. So, yeah, hello, uh, my name is <coughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, next. Uh, yeah, my name is, uh, um, yeah, and I'm working for uh, this and that. So nobody of them said his name uh, or like, <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, yeah. <coughs> um, that was the introduction round, so we didn't know any name, we didn't know what they're, they're good for or what they are doing there. Uh, and then it was like, so, um, guys, so they were starting to do to work with uh, data diodes, sending data from A to B. Um, and uh, suddenly it's like, hey, we have a problem here. So, okay, what's the problem? Uh, I can't tell. So, yeah, how, how does it look on the monitor? Um, I can't tell. <sighs> what was your name? Uh, sorry, can't tell. 
you see, this, this is really a problem, and this is not a made-up story. This actually really happened. So you're sitting there, four guys in a row, all everybody with his huge expertise, with his new, huge knowledge, and we're about to, to want to give it to them. And it's like, ah, oh, sorry, I can't tell. It doesn't work. So how comes that uh, everybody got that paranoid and why they don't talk with you? So perhaps one part, part most probably you found it already uh, out on your own. Uh, this guy who's talking with me, he's an IT guy. I don't believe it. He talks, and he talks a lot, and he's loud. This is usually not a usual, a usual IT guy. So he's already quite suspicious. Perhaps I don't keep it slow, don't talk with him, find out what's wrong with this guy. Next question, is he a sales guy? Could happen. There is a lot of blah, blah, nothing behind. Sorry for any, any sales guys here. Um, but uh, usually this is sales guys talking about technical parts with a sales guy. Hmm. Difficult. Um, oops, sorry. But now we are in the security part. Obviously, I'm talking with guys about what do you have? How does your environment look like? What do you want to achieve? Where, where do you see problems? Where should this go to? What is the goal of, the, of this whole project? All these questions which they usually try to hide from everybody because all the information they give out is automatically uh, a trigger for some, some attacks. And I'm like a psychologist standing there as so like, so and now where's your problem? Come on, tell it to me. I write it in this book and nobody will ever see it. So there is really, there is really a, a huge problem. Um, is it part of a social engineering uh, activity now? Can be. So let me tell you another story. Uh, did you know that there is a, a, a law in Austria? So I'm from Austria, as you know. Um, there's a law in Austria since 1956 which is uh, really funny um, it tell, because it tells something like um, if you're spying, if you're a spy in Austria, so they expect me to be most probably a spy, uh, if you're a spy in Austria and you're spying somebody else, this is okay. So nobody can, nobody can really blame you. So there is no law which stops you from doing this. this. Austria, in, or especially Vienna, Vienna, you know, from the location, Slovenia, Slovakia, Czech Republic, all those countries all around. So that's quite interesting. Then we have some companies there. We have from the uh, uh, UNO, the, the atomic power planning, whatever thing. It's all in Vienna. So they are actually spying on each other. So there is the, 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 the how do you say it in, properly in English? UNO? UNO? United Nations? thingy, this, this building, this, this curved building, where there's all these different bits and pieces in there. And next to it, there's a huge uh, there's a sk a skyscraper. And there is a little nose out of this there. And everybody knows there is the Americans in there, which are spying directly to the UNO. So those, those guys, which, are, which are pretend to be a spies or diplomatic whatever information finder, um, they're sitting there. So it's guessed, nobody knows exact numbers. In, in Vienna, there is around 7,000 of them in high diplomatic ranks, in, uh, in positions where they can uh, fetch information from politics, econo economy, uh, from everywhere. So. It could be, it could possibly be that I'm a spy. So I'm spying on you when we eat pizza, I come to you and uh, I try to find out your bank account number and drop you. No, actually, I'm, I'm too stupid for that one. But uh, this is, this is, a, this is it, sounds, it sounds funny, you know? It sounds like, oh yeah, this idiot, this is a spy. But uh, actually, this is, a, this is a, an attack vector which uh, could really be a part of, uh, of this whole situation. Actually, we also have a, an NSA villa in, in Vienna. So this is known that the NSA is in there and they have a direct connection to the, there's this huge cable uh, in the ground and they have, uh, at, uh, have uh, um, the possibility to uh, have around 30% of all phone calls, internet connection, everything they get out of this one. And it's known. And Austria is actually protecting them. So if you want to go there and make a picture there, then you can be sure that the police will come and say like, doesn't work, give me your camera, give me your mobile phone. 
So Austria is kind of tricky there. So it's uh, also difficult to do business there with uh, with this information in in the background. Yeah. Is this guy trustworthy proof? So I'm not sure if you if you if you ever had this experience. You have to sign NDAs. This is quite quite common in the in, in the industry. So signing NDAs, non-disclosure, no information which is uh, which is exchanged uh, is allowed to to leave the room. Is allowed to get somewhere. Um, uh, there is also checks. We are we are working also quite much with uh, with uh, the military, uh, uh, secret services. So you have this full check of your of you your family your financial situation of everything so most most of all they they know they know everything um but do you have a proof did, did you make a, a background check so you're you're facing uh, some guy in your office tomorrow he's coming in says like hey i'm the guy from cisco and i want to sell you now some really cool shit. Do you do a background check of this guy? Is he really from Cisco? Or is he just the guy coming in there putting some surveillance information into your uh, into your into into the room, putting a, a different cable into your into the phone in there or something like that? Can happen. Because nobody does it. Nobody does a really background check. So um, for this uh, for this paranoia thing, so some people did have uh, bad experiences also in the past. So we are not only working with people uh, who are uh, living on the green grass. Everything is nice. Uh, there is uh, a rainbow in the background. Everything is cool. Uh, we have people who experience really bad problems uh, from in, uh, within the security world. So that's also. A a point, uh, if you had a very bad experience, uh, then most probably you will be more cautious uh, talking with, uh, with, uh, with a stranger coming, uh, coming to you and tell you uh, you should do something for your security, especially there. This one is a really nice one, bad location for, for open talks. Uh, as said, we're, we're also working with uh, the secret guys helping them to, to bring their security on a, on, a, on a higher level than just a plain firewall. Um, and then you need, as said, you need to talk with them. And uh, you're there, as said, you're sitting more or less in your underwear there, more or less naked, and still they don't talk. Why? What the hell? What's wrong? We've didn't, we have done everything. It's a bad location. Location, location, location. Uh, it's like a date with, uh, with uh, your prospect girlfriend. Uh, location is a key fact. Uh, they don't trust their own buildings. Uh, you're sitting in this very secret house uh, and uh, they don't talk in there because, uh, as I said before, uh, the enemy, whoever it is, which nation, which company, or whatever, they know that you're sitting in there and they know where to, they have to watch where there is the meeting rooms and things like that. So they have microphones or whatever in that direction. So location is, uh, is also a point why they don't talk with you. Yeah, and this one is, uh, this one is pretty clear. Uh, uh, general rule, non-disclosure, so they are just simply not allowed to talk with you or give you information. You can give them all the information. You can fill them up till, till here, but you will not get back anything. Usually, if you're lucky, then they tell you. So, OK, you can give me all the information. I can tell you anything. So sorry for that. This is, this is really good. This is a really good situation, but because then you know nothing will come back. We're safe there. Yeah. Good. So. Why is everybody so paranoid? So some, some facts, I have to cheat a little because I can't remember all the, uh, all the numbers. Um, why is everybody so paranoid? Rising cost of breaches. So there was a, just an actual statistic. So when I prepared this one, I was reading a lot of uh, uh, documents in the internet with, with a lot of numbers. Every, every number scares you. Um, an average cyber attack in 2017 was 11.7 million dollars. So if you think of that one, so you're a company, 11.7 millions uh, if you're 
an attack. This is an average, can be more, can be less, obviously. But think of that one. Let it be, you're losing with a cyber attack, you're losing two million. You're a small company, two million. That hurts, that hurts big time. And obviously there is different, is, is additional costs. Loss of reputation, because if you get hacked, usually people will know. And first, who will know is your customers. So you will lose reputation. So you, have, you really have to do something there. And that means you're cautious uh, in giving information. Uh, I have here two, from 2000, uh, 2017, uh, the, the rising during the year uh, of, of the costs was 27.4% from the beginning of 2017 till the end. So this was just like going up like, like crazy. I, actually, in 2017, uh, ransomware wanna cry with uh, one billion uh, with one billion dollar cost in, in total 300,000 computers which were affected and so on. I don't have to tell you if you have read most probably quite a lot of uh, of these uh, things. Um, just as an, uh, one example, Melsk. Uh, this is a large container ship company. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but. Uh, they uh, had to exchange 45,000 computers, 2,000 servers, and 2,000 applications. So cost of 250 to 300 million uh, US dollars. 300 million dollars. You can give it to me. I will be quiet here. I will be just standing, smiling. I do whatever. I will dance here. 300 millions. Bah, come on. Increasingly sophisticated hackers. Yeah. Obviously, uh, if you see Fucafe here uh, when they're doing uh, technical training, web hacking and so on, uh, how many places do you usually have left? Zero? <laughs> so everybody, everybody wants to, everybody wants to be a hacker, and it's really interesting. It's really, it's really cool. Uh, it depends on which side you're standing. If you're on the defending side or if you're on the attacking side, both sides are very interesting. You have to choose which one is is the is the better one. Um, here, there is a, uh, obviously every, every company has, has, has to talk with the world. So uh, it's not like you're living on a, on a lonesome island and uh, you can do whatever you're happy with. You have to talk with people, obviously. So uh, somewhere you have a web server, somewhere you have services facing, uh, facing outside, you're having applications facing the internet. You need it because you have people out there. You have your sales guys. They want to talk with the company. They want to. They need to work with that one. So you're having things out there which people can attack. So, and then there is successful hack, is big gain. Uh, the good guys they do this. They do this for also for money, but for different money. So they earn it. So I, I met a guy for in, at the presentation. Uh, they are doing uh, professional hacking. So they have, uh, this company has hackers all around the world and uh, they have hacked the Pentagon. So they was, the goal was like, okay, Pentagon said, are we safe? We try it, try to prove it. So uh, I'm not sure if they, really, if they really managed to do this, but uh, when he told it, he had a big smile in his face. So kind of worked out. Uh, if they would have used, uh, uh, systems from Advenica, they would have failed, obviously. So, Ad Advenica, you know. <laughs> Good. So, um, and even even the guys, uh, I don't know, what, what's it called? Del Deloitte, Deloitte uh, which is uh, uh, the world's largest cybersecurity consultant company. So, they are huge. Even they were hacked 2016, I think, October 2016, they were hacked. Those people who tell the other guys, like, hey, you have to do this and that and that and that. They were hacked. So, successful hack, big gain. Most probably they didn't make money out of this, but they just showed like, who's the good one? Good. Uh, widely available hacking tools. Yeah, let me Google that for you. My mother can do this. And the descriptions in there, the tools which are out there, my mother can use them, really. And she's really not good in computer. She knows how to use Google yet, but that's that's Skype also. But uh, <laughs> so this is pretty this is pretty simple. So everybody can be the bad guy. So um, again, everybody can be the get bad guy. 
can also be me sitting in front of you or with my laptop and connected to your wireless. How you have a wireless here? You know that one. This one, IoT devices. I'm not sure if uh, where you come from, what you do. IoT, IoT is everywhere. IoT devices is in the fridge, is in your phone, is in uh, Hello Alexa, everything. So Cisco is guess is, is estimating to have 27.1 billion devices in two th uh, 2021. This is just around the corner. 27 billion. This is a lot, and uh, the thing is. Uh, it makes IT very complex. You know, complexity is the worst enemy of security. Security is you want to have it everything under control. 27 billion things where a, a fridge is talking with your TV set and your mobile phone and the camera and whatever. Get this everything under control. And there is an additional problem. 80% uh, 80 uh, 80 uh, of the, the, the IT devices, computers, systems out there, the, um, what's it called? I have to, che I have to cheat. Um, the computer identities, so key certific uh, certificates, names of systems and so on, they are not saved by the IT guys. So you could go in there, get one piece out there and put yours in there with the same name, same IP address, and you're in. So this one is, this one is, a, is, a, is, a, huge, is a huge problem. And also why people don't talk with you, tighter regulations. So GDPR, everybody knows, uh, you have to, if you're uh, putting your car into the garage, you have to sign, okay, my data. <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> uh, NIS regulations. This is uh, this is um, this is not so much known. This is more for the in the energy in the energy market. So there is very tight regulations of uh, what you what you are allowed to, uh, what you are allowed to do. So here with the NIST regulations, for example, the, the Austrians uh, they doing they doing even a higher level of security. They building in building in there. Uh, but this is also you know there is tighter regulations, more difficult to get to get in those things. Good. So now we have done this all. We, we are cleared, people know us, they talk with us, more or less, hopefully, uh, no. So, I still cannot do business. Why? I've done everything, really, tell me. Classification of this uh, project is higher than your clearance. I was, uh, I was uh, once, uh, this was uh, with, a, with a prior company, I was in Singapore uh, doing, uh, there, was, uh, there was at this time, this was quite some, some years ago, so I can't talk about this one because it's public already. Um, this was uh, the starting of this Homeland Security thing. You heard of this, so uh, you had sitting in more or less in front of a huge monitor and you see everything which is going around, where there's the police car and where is uh, the ambulance and you, you have this complete control of, uh, of your city, like London with all the cameras around. So um, this, was in, this was in Singapore and uh, this was for Homeland Security, this was for the, for the uh, name it, these things which are in the air. Airplanes, uh, airport, that was the word, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> for the airport, so they, they, they checked for the airport. Uh, planes coming in, planes starting, starting off and things, and things like that. And uh, I was there to, to train them how to build this whole, this whole scenery, how to make the, the graphics, how to do the scripting and things like that. And uh, I was standing there, I was there for a week and uh, at the first day I said like, so, okay guys, what you want to what you want to do what you want to achieve which direction should it go and they said like so yeah we sorry we we can we cannot tell you we checked your clearance and it's not high enough for that one and it was uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm a really patient guy. As I said, I'm from Austria, from this mountain. Uh, we're really patient guys. Uh, is it like <laughs> um, 
guys, this doesn't work out. Uh, Singapore is not around the corner of Austria, so it was a quite a long flight. I'm uh, kind of unrelaxed. Uh, let's find a solution on that one, because otherwise I have to do something really not good. Um, this was a problem. So. Uh, Finally, they, they, they talked with me and they, they also brought me there. But this was a huge, this was a huge mess to, to, get, this, to, to get this all settled. Uh, I'm not sure if this works, uh, if this works in, in Sweden that way. So if you're going there and you're working, you want to do for work for a project and your clearance is not high enough, if they will still let you in somehow. This, perhaps this is an Asian thing, but uh, I, I highly doubt it. In Austria, this would not work. Then. And then actually, uh, just a side note, uh, adver advertisement that was really good. This was a military thing, obviously. And they had this huge sign outside there. It has nothing to do with that one, but it's just an information. They had this huge sign out there. You had to see the, 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 uh, an arm, and you see them, have seen a mosquito uh, on the arm. And uh, the, the, the text uh, said, don't bleed for the mosses, for the mosquitoes. Bleed for your country. Join the army. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, just as a side note. Okay, um, certification needed. So you need a national certification for this product, else we cannot use it in the government or, or in the military or something like that. So this is this is also uh, uh, this is also a problem. Problem. <laughs> this is also really nice. The actual situation is too embarrassing. That sounds pretty stupid, actually. True, like so you bring somebody in and you don't tell him because the situation you're facing is too embarrassing. What? What's wrong with you guys? Uh, it's true. Uh, they, they bring you in because they need something from you. They have problems. Uh, but uh, they don't dare to tell you uh, how their actual situation looks like. Because uh, perhaps uh, the problems they're facing is not a small door where you can't sneak in, but it's more or less three house blocks which are just down and you can just bring in everything you want. The only security they have is nobody knows about it. So the actual situation is too embarrassing. That's a big point. That's really a big point that they don't tell you. Politi political situation. So you had just elections yesterday, I heard. Uh, so uh, I was just reading the news uh, because uh, uh, we had also elections in Austria last year, and so the complete, the whole shebang changed completely. Uh, so um, political situation changes suddenly. A project which is just there, you can see it, you can smell it. Actually, it's just you can almost touch it. New political situation, that's it. And you start from square number one again. New people, they're not to allowed to talk with you anymore. You talk with them, they told you everything. Suddenly, ah, sorry, we, we can't tell you about the status, we don't know. Yeah, but uh, this is uh, <laughs> that's a different story. We we talk about it with the offside then. <laughs> uh, the thread is there, but no budget, no budget, no talks. I know I have a problem. I've talked with this IT guy. I know it. They have this problem, and they have to secure their whatever syslog server. Uh, there is a threat. There is some hacking attacks in direction of these of these of these systems. Perhaps not always from outside. It can also be from inside. So there is a threat. They know it, but uh, they don't have a budget. What should I tell you? I can I don't I can't afford this. So I why should I talk with you? I can still give you some perhaps some information. Okay, we don't sell anything, but mm, difficult. This is, this is my preferred one. IT security for is business flexibility. This is really nice. IT security, everybody, if you talk with anybody, everybody will tell you, hey, IT security, yeah, sure. We do everything. That's, we have everything. We have the best firewalls. We have the best VPN solutions. Uh, we have uh, data diodes. Uh, we have everything. 
And we spend a lot of money. Really, believe me. Uh, and then uh, this business flexibility jumps in where somebody says like, yeah, but uh, we, you know, we have this, this other project which uh, has nothing to do with uh, security. It's a completely different story. Uh, and uh, if we if we put in now this uh, additional security, perhaps this is uh, then we are missing money there. And uh, let's go for the for the big balls. Uh, keep the IT security aside. And this is really happening. And actually, honestly, if I'm if I'm the CEO of, of the company and somebody tells me like, "Hello, three millions. Hello," I will take them. Sure. I will go for it and say like, yeah, security is cool. Yeah, really, and we need it, but three millions, go for it. So what's the conclusion out of this one? You, you still need the IT security because uh, something can happen. So what you need is to have flexible systems which uh, can be used in different, in different ways, in different areas. Uh, and... Uh, and from a from a pricing perspective, they're at the at the level where everybody can still afford it and don't have to think twice. Uh, can I do it? Can can I, can I uh, not do it? That was not a, a nice English sentence, but you know what I mean. So take uh, two out of three. I have to cheat here because I'm always losing that one. This is a uh, this is this uh, this thing you have you've heard it, heard it many times. So low cost, easy to use means not secure. So you always just have two out of three. Uh, secure and low cost is not easy to use. And the third thing is secure and easy to use, not at low cost. So they, is, they are expensive. So you always have two out of three, which blocks you to talking with the customer because they say like, mm, this one, but I'm missing that one. And you most probably you will never have in those two the one he's actually searching for. Never. Um, actually, we are we are quite successful on that one with uh, with with Advenica. Um, we have uh, sold uh, this uh, our uh, our equipment to the to the uh, Ministry of Defense, so they they are using those things. And uh, uh, what's uh, this uh, the rank Co colonel? I think it's colonel. I checked it in Swedish. What's it called? Överste. Is this a is this a word? Yeah. I know. So uh, I re, uh, the thing is uh, the sentence in the beginning. I don't speak a single word in Swedish. Forget about it. <laughs> um, so uh, he said a really nice he said a really nice thing. Um, the equipment they they buy and why they bought uh, our our systems is it has two key factors. The systems which they buy have to last for at least 20 years. So they buy a lot, they put it there, amortization 20 years, this is good, has to work in 20 years still. And the second thing is, which I personally really like as the, as, as the point, is um, colleagues, low salary colleagues have to be able to handle it. So the low salary, usually these are not the high rank guys, <laughs> obviously. So this combination of you can have it forever, more or less, and it's easy to use, and uh, as a, as a, a governmental uh, institution buy it, it also, it's also cheap. So somehow we can handle to make th three out of three. Let's make it two and a half out of three, but that's even better than two out of three. Uh, and that one is, uh, that hurts every IT guy, every administrator. Uh, if you integrate new systems, if you want to bring your uh, security to, uh, to a higher level, then you need to change things. You cannot stay as it is, so you have to do something. And if you integrate uh, high security in, uh, devices, um, then usually you will not be the most popular guy in the world anymore because uh, users will not like you because uh, they cannot work yeah. as they worked before so this one is like that this one is this is a this is a this is a, a 
also a problem why people refuse to go into the security area. And then we have a, a nice list of uh, you're finally in and then you're facing a new new problem. So now we're, now we're talking, we finally made them to talk with us, but still there is some host or can be some hostile um, uh, situations. So IT security force, uh, internal IT professionals. IT professionals, uh, there was a, there was a, a, a checking. So 43% uh, percent of the IT guys they were asking, they said they, they think of a 50-50 chance that they can hack their own company. And those are the guys which you're talking to to bring in new security, bring these things to a new security level. It's which site are you choosing again? So this one is this one is a is a problem. So this 50%, if you bring in high security systems, and most probably they will not be able to hack their own company, so they cannot brag about this one anymore. And this is a problem because uh, then they don't love you, and then they will do everything to not bring it to the next to the next level. IT security needs uh, needs for its business uh, strategy. Um, I love these CISOs. I really love those guys. I don't envy them. They have a really, really hard job at the moment because uh, every day there is a new problem popping up here and there. This is vulnerable. This is this. There is a break in. There is this one. So those guys have to handle this one for huge companies, and they have to usually fight depending on where they are, with the CFO, with the CEO, uh, for money, for uh, uh, reputation, for bringing things, bringing things in. So here is the business strategy, here is the IT security. This doesn't, I know, I know companies where this works perfectly together. So CEO, C, uh, the, the CISO, they're aligned, completely aligned, they're working in the same direction, they're pulling the same strings, but not everywhere. So there is there is fights in there. So and then you can decide which side are you in on the, on from the security side here on the CISO side usually or here on the CEO CFO, which usually give you then the money. Um, IT security for is innovation. Um, this actually this is um, I, I I took this one, but uh, honestly, from my understanding, this I don't understand because. Uh, IT security needs for its innovation. IT security is, in my opinion, my, my very personal. So you can be you can be the different you can have a different opinion, uh, but IT security this is the foundation of everything. If 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 the, the the house which you're building the foundation is not stable is not secure, then most probably this whole thing will collide somewhere. So. If you're building a network and the IT security is not on a, is not on a high, very high level, then this will not work out. Somewhere you will run into huge problems. So I usually I don't see this, this IT security needs for its innovation. So IT security is not is not limiting your innovation. This is the foundation. This is the base for everything which you do uh, to to get innovative to build new cool things. IT security for user experience, the user, yes, we, we, we know them, uh, they, will exp they will complain. I, I rarely hear users which, which say like, so, hey, two years ago when we didn't do anything about security, uh, it, was, it was so bad, I, I really like it how it is now where I have to enter my password 20 times uh, to get to on, on the mail server and uh, I have to change this password every three hours, okay, perhaps not, but uh, every two weeks and then this complexity has to be like this and then I had this one already. <laughs> IT security user, user will not like you, especially if you're, as I said before, uh, with, when, with, with our products where you bring this existing uh, security even to a higher level, uh, which means usability, not always, but sometimes is lacking a little, it's going a little bit down. So users will not like you. And IT security for us developers. Uh, developers tend to be 
the innovative guys building new things, bringing in new features, doing this, that. Wow, this would be cool, that would be cool. Let's do this one and that one. And then there is this security guy and they're like, nope, we cannot do this. Uh, because I have to open port whatever on the firewall, on the border firewall, no chance. I cannot do this. So obviously, developers are not always uh, our the guys which uh, which jump on this and say like, "Wow, cool! Yeah, bring this in. Stop me from working." Uh, this doesn't. This really. This rarely happens. So this is also a problem which we have to. Uh, and it's not a problem. It's a challenge. Let's name it challenge. It's a challenge we have to we have to to face and to find solutions for that one. Good. So, at the end, so, is it uh, really a good idea to work in cybersecurity world or security world at all? Uh, I'm just, I told you quite a lot of things uh, which is like, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, nobody likes us, uh, nobody talks with us. So is it really cool? Should I be, should I be, uh, I don't know, professional tennis player or whatever instead? Uh, is it frustrating? Honestly, sometimes yes. Sometimes you feel like, God, why? Why me? Uh, but um, it's not always. It's sometimes. Sometimes it, it happens. But it, it happens also for people which are, I don't know, on the road construction, building something, uh, planting trees, even the gardener. Everybody says, like, so if IT is nothing, be a gardener. This is great. You can cut leaves there they don't talk back it's great uh, even they they are frustrated I know one uh, he hates he has a special tree he hates um, challenging and fun yes definitely it's challenging it's really challenging into very different perspectives uh, people uh, the own systems uh, the systems of the customer, the setup, this whole package which you're, you, which you're facing, it's challenging, it's cool. So if you're, if you're more the guy like leaning back, say like status quo, that's it, perfect. So this 300 million thingy I told you before. Uh, if you don't, if you're not for challenges, don't go there. It's not good. Is it fun? Oh yes, I like it. I really like it. Boring? Not a second. That's that's for sure. It's I had I haven't had. I'm working now 25 years in this in this industry, and it was really never boring. Definitely not. You had to do some stupid jobs where you say like, but uh, boring? No. Future proof? What should I tell? I told you numbers before. Uh, how many billions and millions are? Are, are invested in the future into this into this area. I I don't think that I need to to find a, a, a different profession in my life if I if I if I want to stay uh, if I want to stay in the in the IT security world. And is it worth to work in such a security company? So, as I said, I'm I'm working I'm working there. Uh, yes, uh, I've tried different things. Uh, and uh, somehow I came back like a boomerang again into the IT security industry. As I said, I worked for, for uh, a TV station, I did graphics, I did real-time animations, and so on. This is really cool. It's really, honestly said. But uh, the thing is, um, if, you're, if you're working, perhaps it, it depends on the size of the company. If you're in a, if, if you're in a, in a small size, like we are, so, 60, 70 people, you're very flexible. You can do this, you can do that, this one is cool, that one. So also in, in programming, I'm not so sure, Lasse. In programming, he's a very nice boss, programming, easy. You can do almost everything. Guys, you're quiet now here. <laughs> so you're really, you're, you're really flexible there. You can, do a lot of, you can do a lot of things. If you're in a huge company, if you're a programmer in a huge company, you will focus on this tool from day one till the end of your life. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's really, it's, it, it's really cool. Good. Uh, I don't know how much timing I'm good, I'm bad, I'm, you're still, you're still breathing, so I can. 
Actually, I'm, I would have been Papa. Yeah. <laughs>